So in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to take your HA data that you've acquired through a, a dual narrowband filter like the L-Extreme or the l Enhance, and extract that HA data out of the RGB set and add it into your RGB images. That process worked very well for Nebulae, but not so much for galaxies. It tended to mute the galaxy down and just wasn't a good workflow for adding HA into RGB with four galaxies. That's what this video is about. We're going to use something called continuum subtraction to do the same thing. We're using a one-shot color camera. In my example, I've shot my RGB data just using the L Pro filter and my HA data using the IDAS MBZ2 filter and then extracting just the HA data out of that, taking that data and adding it into the RGB data, which allows those little HA jewels around the galaxies to really pop out for us. So a completely different process for doing this with the galaxies than it was previously with the nebulae. I know a lot of you have been asking me for it, so it took me a while to get it worked out. So let's get to it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, time of recording, I'm using the latest version of Serial, which is 1.2.4. I've already stacked my data that we're going to be using for this video, but let me show you what we're working with here. So I have a folder called M31 Project, the Andromeda Galaxy. Within that folder, I have two other folders. These are two separate nights. So this first one are all my calibration frames and my lights that I took that night just with the L-Pro filter. I have about six and a half hours of total data. I processed this data set, like I said, that I took with the L-Pro with the OSC pre-processing script. So that's why you're already seeing the process directory and my stack. And then if I back up again into my project directory, I have one called M31HA. This data, same thing, I've already stacked it, but it was shot with my IDAS NBZ2 filter, which is a dual narrowband filter. If you're using a, an L Enhance or an L Extreme or any OSC narrowband filter, this will work for you as well. Again, I stacked this one as well already, so that's why my process folder is there as well as my stack. Now, this one was stacked with Cyril's OSC Extract HA script. So this stack here is not an RGB file. This is a mono file now. It's just the HA. So what we're going to do, again, back into my parent directory that I have named M31 Project, I'm going to create two additional folders. Now, you don't have to do this. I do this just for file management, basically. We're going to end up with some extra files, some of the steps that we go through. This just keeps things a little bit cleaner and easier to understand, both for me as I'm going through it, as well as for you guys, hopefully, as, as I'm showing you the process. So we're going to start with creating the one call project process right which is what we're used to seeing if we're using the scripts and then i'm also going to create a second one called working and then i'm going to come back up into my two nights right so this is again my rgb stack that i ran with the l pro and i'm going to copy my stack from here and i'm going to put it over and paste it into my working directory and then do the same thing for the ha stack i'm going to copy it from here and put it into my working directory. Back over in the serial, I'm gonna set my home directory to that working directory that I just showed you. So we're gonna browse over to where I have everything set up. M31 project, and there's my working directory. And then click open, verify up top that we are in fact in the working directory. And then we're gonna start with the RGB stack. So I'm gonna open up my RGB stack. We're currently in a linear view, so I'm going to bring that into auto stretch so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to give this a quick crop. Um, again, I've mentioned this in other videos. I prefer to do my crop from the histogram view because it tends to show you more of the artifacts around the edge. So I am going to just draw a selection around that lets me crop out those artifacts. So right click and crop. And very important, make sure you hit save because we're going to take this into Graxpert to do some background extraction after we're finished here. So the RGB stack is ready. Now I am going to open up my HA stack and do the same thing. As I mentioned, this is just a mono image because the HA was extracted from that stack. So same thing, I'm going to give it a crop to get those artifacts out of there. And then hit save come back down to histogram and go into auto stretch just so we have a nice calm view of everything and then we'll launch for expert all right so again we'll start with the rgb image so i'm going to click load image bring in my rgb stack currently there's no stretch set so i'm going to put that to a 15 percent stretch just so we can see what's going on and come over into background extraction i like using the ai method but you can choose whichever method that you like and hit calculate background once that's finished we're going to come over to saving Make sure we're set to 32-bit fits. Click on Save Processed. I just call this one RGB-BGE for background extraction. And then click Save. 
And we're going to do the same thing with the HA stack. So we're going to load that image up next. Our result underscore HA, same thing. Run the AI background extraction and then save it. 32-bit fits. And similar to the last one, I'll call this one HA BGE. And then click save. And we can close Graxpert for now because we're done with that. Before we move further, I'm going to come back over into my working directory. And just to keep things clean, I am going to delete these two stacks. We don't need them anymore. They're copies, so I already have a copy of my stacks. If I wanted to start over again, I suggest you do the same thing. Anything that I show you that I'm deleting as we go through this process, you probably want to make a backup copy of it. It'll just make it easier for you to back up a step or two if you need to. So we're going to delete those two. So we're just left with our two that we just extracted the background from. And then over in Cyril, we're going to open up the RGB file. And we're going to extract the red, green, and blue channels from this image. So we're going to come to image processing, extraction, split channels, and I'm going to call it R, G, M, B. Click apply and then close. Just to show you, if we go back over into our working directory, we now have three separate files, R, G, M, B. Again, just to keep things clean, I'm going to select my original R, G, B file and just delete it. All right, so back over into serial. Again, we're in our working directory that we created or our home directory. Now we're going to change this to our process directory. So I'm going to back up one level, hit my process directory, and then open it. And I'm just doing this now because we have to register these images together. We have the R, G, and B images as well as the H, A. R, G, and B obviously are already aligned together because they came from the same image, but the H, A was shot on, on a different night, and there's just no way that it's going to be lined up perfectly with the R, G, B image. So we need to get those registered and aligned. I switched the working directory to my process directory because I don't want all of those files that are going to get created all dumped into my working directory. Again, just file management stuff. So we we'll come over to your conversion tab, click the plus button down here to add the files that we need. We're going to be opened up in our process directory obviously so back up into your working directory and you want to grab these four files these are the ones that we want to align and click add down the sequence name you can call this whatever you want but i just put an h a r g b click the convert button once that's done we're just going to jump right over to our registration tab make sure we're on global star alignment and then click go register and once it's finished if we click on our frameless button down here all four of our images are now aligned together so everything's nice and aligned for us now so back over the file explorer and we're going to go into our process directory and we're going to grab our four registered files we're going to cut them from that location and we're going to put them into our working directory okay so now we're ready for the next step we're going to come back over into serial and once more we're going to change our working directory i don't want to be in process i want to be in my actual working directory now so i'm going to put that back to working which is where all of our files are at that we need. And now we're ready to create a new image, which is our continuum subtraction image. So we do that using pixel math. We're going to go up to image processing and pixel math. The first thing we need to do is hit our plus button and add our files. So we're just interested in our registered files now. So these four here, click open. Make sure that you have U single RGBK selected. We don't actually need all of these images at this point in time, but it just keeps it simple for our, our next step. I already have everything preloaded, but as you can see down here under the images section, we have images one, two, three, and four, and Cyril has assigned them each a variable based on uh, their channel. So it knew that image number one was blue. It knew that two was green three was our HA and four was our red. So we're set for this. We just need one expression now to do our continuum subtraction. And the formula that we're going to use looks just like that. In a nutshell, what the formula is doing is removing the red channel from the HA channel. You'll see the Q in here, which is a parameter that we need to set down here. So we're gonna say Q equals, and I'm just going to start it at point one, which is not going to work for this image, but I just want to show you guys where you need to be for your final image as you're playing with this value. So once we have the formula in place and our parameter in place, you just click apply and it's going to build the new image based on that formula. It doesn't look much different than what we already had loaded up, but that's what I wanted to show you. This is not what you're looking for. We're trying to isolate the HA regions within the image. So point one is too low, but conversely, if we were to go to say point five, that's too high we don't want everything blacked out like this either so that's your scale right you don't want it too bright and white and you don't want it too dark and black so you got to find the middle ground so one wasn't enough five is too much so we'll go to point two hit apply 
that's still not enough so let's go up to 0.3 all right, so that's looking better. You can see our little HA jewels around the galaxy are starting to get isolated. You can ignore the stars. It's not going to have an effect on it. But what we don't want is this black area around the core. So 0.2 isn't enough. 0.3 is still too much. So we'll back that down to 0.25. Click apply. See what we get. That's still not enough. So we'll go to 6. And then we can just keep climbing. As we're watching the image, 2.7, 2.8. This is closer to what we want. I think 2.9 is probably going to throw some black in that core. Yeah, and it does. So that's 2.8. It's close. 2.9 is a little bit over. So let's try 2.85. And I think that looks good, right? We don't have real bright white area on the core. The black is all but gone. There's a couple little specks there. I don't think that's going to cause an issue for us, though. But what we're after is the HA, the, all the little jewels that are around the galaxy here. So that is our image. We're going to click close. You can see it says pixel math result. So this is not yet a saved image. So we're going to come over to our save image button. And I'm going to call this one HACS. So CS for continuum subtraction. Click save. Make sure you're 32-bit. You'll get a warning that we're still in linear mode, which, yes, we know. That's what we want, so click Save anyways. So with that file created for us now, we're going to go back up into Pixel Math, and we need to add that new file that we just created. So click the plus button, find your HACS file. So it's added into the list down here, and you'll notice this time the variable came in as mixed. So you want to double-click on that, and we're going to rename that to HA cs and i've mentioned this in previous videos too but it's worth mentioning again your variable names are case sensitive so anything that you're using in your formulas have to match the case otherwise you'll get a syntax error so just be aware of that so for this session in pixel math we're going to uncheck use single rgbk and our red channel formula is going to look like this where you can see where it's using our new file so this formula is going to rebuild our red channel using our new hacs file that we just created and added into the file list down here again we have a queue which is still there from our previous pixel math session but this number is way too low for it to work so we're going to start with a whole number and we'll start that at three our green and blue channel for green we're just going to leave it green the formula that i found for blue and i'll show it to you guys here is pretty much the same formula that we use for red except it's multiplied by 0.2 now i'm not going to use this i'm just showing it to you so you're aware of it because maybe it does work better on another set of data i don't like the way that it looks on my set of data so I, i'm not going to use it but i will show you right now what it does to the image with q set at three we hit apply and there's our new image what i don't like about this formula is i mean maybe the little ha regions look okay but the dust lanes have got this magenta glow to it that i, I I just don't like and it and it seems to have muted the color of the galaxies as well but moving forward you know the q value this is kind of like your boost level so if i go to four you can see the colors increased five you know so again you just play with it until you find what you like if this formula works for you then then by all means use it like i said i don't like all the magenta that's going on inside this image so what i found to do was just get rid of that and just use the blue channel now if i hit apply I still have all my HA, but I've, you know, I've got the browns and, and oranges and, and everything that I expected to see from my RGB set of data. So that's how I'm going to run with this one. Again, you can keep bumping this up and down to see, to get it to where you like it. If you go way too far up, you know, do something crazy like 20, you can see that's just over the top. You don't want that much in there. I think eight probably looked pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with eight. So we'll close that. And again, because we registered, we have artifacts again on the sides here. So I'm going to give the image prop, get rid of those. And then we're going to come up, we're going to do a little bit of manual color calibration, just the background neutralization. So um, image processing, color calibration, and then color calibration. Find a good area on the image that represents your background. I'm just going to take a small sample right over in here. Use current selection, background neutralization, and then we'll close that. 
Um, this is not a save file yet, so we want to make sure we save it. So again, we'll hit our save button up here. We'll just call this one M31, I don't know, CS for continuum subtraction, just so we know which files to work with. Again, 32-bit, hit save. We get our linear mode warning, that's fine, save anyways. And now it's pretty much just my normal processing. The, we'll go through it here, I'll do some quick processing on this. Just keep in mind, if you've watched my previous video on processing galaxies, things are a little bit different in here for different reasons. It's hard to keep the color balance between the HA regions and the original color in the galaxy without losing the color in the galaxy or blowing out the colors or oversaturating the colors in the HA region. So it's a little bit different than that process. But what's not different is my next step. So at this point, we have an image to work with, and I'm going to come up and remove the stars. So image processing, star processing, star net star removal. We are still linear, obviously. So we want to make sure pre stretched linear image is selected as well as generate star mask and then just hit execute. All right, our stars are removed. And yes, it looks ugly. This is just an auto stretch view. And because of the process we went through, it's a little too much for this view mode. We're going to come out of auto stretch and go into linear and start doing our stretching. So image processing and then generalized hyperbolic stretch. And I'm going to move my local stretch intensity all the way over to the right. And the stretch factor, I'm going to do a pretty aggressive stretch. And what I usually do, and I've mentioned this in previous videos too, is I'm aggressive with it so I can see the faintest parts of the image. And then once going, I, once I start going further, that I don't, it's not bringing any more data out. It's just making the image bright. Then I'll start backing it down, watching the faintest areas of data that I can see. And when those edges start to disappear out of view, then that's my sweet spot, right? So right there, that looks kind of good. If they were to start to disappear, then I move them back up forward again. So that looks good for my initial stretch. I'm gonna click apply and just leaving the local stretch intensity where it's at right now, I'm gonna move, do a little bit of a stretch. I just like to do these ones a little bit at a time. I feel like I get a better result, but you can absolutely, you know, go crazy with it. You can do more aggressive stretch if you feel that works for you. Apply after each adjustment. All right, so for those first few stretches, I'm happy with that. If you look at the histogram, you can see from the left side of the screen to where the data starts, we have a gap here. So I'm going to come over to linear stretch and move that black point over. You just want to make sure you don't start clipping data. If you watch your clip percentage down here, I'm at zero right now, which is good. If I go a little bit more, you can see I'm starting to clip data, which you don't want to do. So a little bit's not bad, but you want to try and keep that number as close to zero as possible. Click apply, and then we're going to come back up into our generalized hyperbolic. And this time I'm going to draw a little sample point over on the lighter areas of dust that I see on the side of the galaxy. Click my eyedropper to set that as my symmetry point and just do a little bit of stretching. You can also use your shadow protection point to protect the contrast in the shadows. You can only go as far as what you have your symmetry point set at. So I can't go any further than that. And the actual console down here will show you that you can't set it higher than the actual stretch point. So click apply. Everything resets when you do that. So I'm going to hit the eyedropper again and move my shadow protection point over once more. And again, a little bit more stretching and maybe one more time. Okay, that looks good. Now I like to grab a sample point of the brightest part of the image. So in our case now, that's the core of Andromeda. Hit my eyedropper. I'm going to leave the shadow protection point where it's at because this will allow me to narrow the histogram, which actually helps darken the background a little bit. Apply, maybe do it one more time and apply. All right, so I like that. That's as far as we're going to go with Cyril. And now we're going to jump into Photoshop to make our, our final adjustments. So we need to save this as a TIFF file to do so. So I'm going to click my save button and we're going to do a TIFF starless M31CS. That's fine for me. Click save. We're going to go into 16 bit and come back over and just double click the tip file to open it up in photoshop all right so what i'm going to do here first is i'm going to show you guys the histogram so under window and histogram so we can see each channel and where the data lies now the, the red's going to be shifted a little bit because of the filter so what i like to do with all my images actually is come into the adjustments under images and go into levels and go to each individual channel and take a look to see if there's any space on the left hand side that can be adjusted and almost always when i'm using my narrowband filter for my one-shot color camera 
the green and the blue channels always have a gap in between the left side and where the data starts. So doing it channel by channel, just take the reference point and just move it over to where the data starts. Then we'll do the same thing for the blue channel where data starts. And you can see this, there's a red tint, especially in the background to the image. Again, it's because the red is not lining up perfectly with the green and the blue. So I'll come back into the red and move this over to where the data starts to shoot up the slope. And you can see that it's more of a natural look, right? And then our, our histogram is more accurately aligned, I guess you would say, or close, more closely aligned. You don't want to go too far, right? Then you start losing your red. But you can take off like that little tail end just to where the data starts to slope up and then click OK. There may be other ways, better ways of doing that. That's what I found works well for me. So I'm going to close my histogram and we're going to come up in the filter and camera raw filter. Start over in our light section and we're going to add just a little bit of contrast. Not too much because it starts to mute out all the faint dust lanes along the edge. And what I found works, at least with this particular data, before I start messing with my highlights and everything else, is I jump down into my whites and bring those up. Obviously, you know, you don't want to blow the core out, but the whites will bring up the whites along the edges. Everything gets a little bit brighter. Once I have that set, then I'll come back to my highlights, start bringing my highlights down. And it just seems, if you go back and forth with these two, gives you a little bit better balance because you do want things to brighten up around the, the lanes of the galaxy as well but you don't want to blow out the core so it's just a preference thing again back and forth and then i can start playing with the other stuff right so if i want to mess with my shadows generally i take the shadows down quite a bit this helps mute that background where there's no data that i want to see anyways and then the blacks you know again go one way or the other i'm just watching the edge of the galaxies the very edge of the galaxies where that faint stuff is at and it's making a minor adjustment colors i'm not going to mess with the vibrance and saturation because i use the color mixer to do some adjustments you can if you want to just just be careful this can be kind of aggressive and if we come into our effects and play with the dehazing sometimes that helps make the image look a little bit cleaner so you have plus three that's as far as i'm going to take that one and then clarity again be careful with it but this is like kind of like sharpening but you can get crazy with it and that's way too overdone right but just just give it you can just give it a little bit just to bring out some detail and then the color mixer i like using the color mixer and not just playing with the sliders you absolutely can do that what i use is the targeted adjustments over here on the side if you click on this wherever you put your mouse it's analyzing those pixels in that area so i can come up and say over in this area here left mouse button click and it gives me this adjustment slider that allows me to make adjustments and if you look over on the right hand side you can see it's adjusting the oranges and the yellows as i'm moving my mouse back and forth so it's i think a more even way of being able to make your saturation adjustments right again find it where you like it and let go of the mouse button and that makes your adjustment and then the same thing if you wanted to play around with the ha regions you can just get your mouse pointer over there and play around with the colors in the ha right and, and the same thing works with the hue this targeted adjustment here as well and the luminance sometimes the luminance helps bring some things out here a little bit so we'll play with that and see what we get you can see it's you know luminance obviously it's making things brighter so watch your core don't want to go too crazy with it i actually ended up bringing that down so that you know that's this is just real quick i i would probably spend a lot more time on this trying to get things dialed in but i don't know for a quick processing i think that looks pretty good so i'm happy with it i'm gonna click ok and i'm just gonna come up to file and save my changes then back into serial we need to open up that tiff file that we just worked with which is right here and I'm going to save that back as a 32-bit fit so we can bring the stars back in. And you can overwrite your existing. You can see the file name coming back in as the file that we started with. You can overwrite that if you want to, but I'm going to change the name to M31 and just call it Recomp because we're getting ready to put the stars back in. Hit save, 32-bit, save, and now we can add the stars back in. So image processing, star processing, and star recomposition. On the background stretch parameter side, we're gonna load up that new image that we just saved. So M31 recomp, and we're gonna pull in our star mask file. I like to jump into advanced and set my color stretch model to even weighted. It helps with the stars sometimes. Modified arc sign is fine. You can also try and use generalized hyperbolic if you like, but generally this works pretty well. And just start stretching in your stars as much or as little as you want. All right, we still have our star color. Click apply when you're happy. 
and that's our final image just call it m31 final and at this point i'll save it off as a tiff to bring it into photoshop so i can save it as other formats as well and, and resize it for social media like youtube that doesn't allow you to have a, a, an extremely large file for uploading so i hope that ends up being a good workflow for everybody trying to do this with their galaxy images i'd love to see what you guys come up with you can tag me over on facebook or instagram links for my other social media sites are below let me know in the comments how it goes for you so if you have any tips or tricks to make this even better let us know in the comments comments. I'd love to hear about them. I'm sure others would love to hear about them as well. Before you go, I just want to say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on Buy Me A Coffee. I appreciate everybody's support. If you're not already a subscriber of the channel, please consider subscribing and tick that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Share and like everything that you watch. It really helps my channel grow. If you're considering making any purchases, I have multiple affiliate links down below in the description to High Point Scientific, Agena Astro. Uh, there's a handful of them down there. There's no additional cost for you to use them. I get a little bit of a kickback. It's a great way to help support the channel. As always, I appreciate everybody's time. I'll see you on the next video in clear skies.